video will be about the uh, general view in the biochemistry in relates to the metabolism. So let's begin with a few pathways that we have to understand. First one it's let's start with the glucose. So the glucose, this is sweet here. So glucose will actually convert it uh, into pyruvate um, in three steps. So one of the steps, one of the first steps is glucose 6 phosphate and furthermore into phospho phosphoglyceraldehyde and then into pyruvate these are simplified steps uh, in which in these steps this is what we call glycolysis which compose of 10 steps altogether and from the pyruvate it will further convert it into acetyl coa before entering the mitochondria to get into the Krebs cycle so here is the mitochondria and this is a Krebs cycle the aim of this is actually to go into the electron transport chain the ETC which will produce a huge amount of ATPs for energy so basically one of the favorite questions is about the nets of the ATPs that is produced in this whole cycle so in general uh, in glycolysis um, we're gonna use two ATP uh, in the first five phase phase one and the second phase is the energy producing uh, steps whereby it's, uh, the glycolysis will produce four ATPs and also two NAD so in total net we're gonna have two ATPs and two NADH and the NADH will shunt into the ele uh, electron transport chain. So this is the net value for only for the, for the first 10 steps. The pyruvate that converted into acetyl-CoA as well will produce another NADH. So here we're going to have 2 NADH because the pyruvate is actually um, glucose is 6 uh, carbox. Uh, six carbon um, structure but pyruvate is three carbon structure and also acetyl is three uh, three carbon structure so basically we're going to produce two NADH because it's coming from the six carbon structure so in here we're going to produce two NADH in the Krebs cycle um, the body will produce at least um, 3 NADH, 2 FADH, and 1 GTP. And further down, so, and this will be shunted into the ETC. So, what is the total of one glucose molecule? As we know, um, the NAD, if NADH, it will convert into 3. The one NADH will convert into three ATPs, while one FADH will convert it into two ATPs. For GTP, yeah, one net of one ATP. So that is how we get from one uh, glucose, we have 30 to 32 ATPs in total. That is if we need the energy. But what if the energy is enough, the ATP is high enough, where will be the glucose shunted into? So the first one is the G6, uh, glucose 6-phosphate. So the first shunt will go to the PPP, which is the very important um, and aerobic uh, condition. This PPPP, which is the pentose phosphate, pathway or shunt is basically to form the five uh, carboxy phosphate which is the 
the backbone of the DNA and also the RNA itself. So carboxyl groups. The second one is it will produce NADPH, which is the phosphate here. It's similar like NADH, but it contains phosphate here in the structure. And this actually needs uh, this pathway can be divided into oxidative, which produce the 5 carboxy pentose and also the NADPH. And it's also contain non oxidative, which I think is not the highlights in the MRCOGs, because this basically will have some carbon shuttles reaction. which actually can get into the glycolysis pathway without requiring any NAD. That is the first jump. The second one is the G6P also at the same time will convert it into phosphoglyceraldehyde and phosphoglyceraldehyde will get to become glycerol and uh, together with acetyl-CoA, which were formed into fatty acid. And this together will form the triglyceride, which will be stored in the adipocytes. If the ATP is enough, then the body will store the uh, acetyl-CoA and also phosphoglyceraldehyde in the form of triglyceride. And the pyruvate actually can go, the fate of the pyruvate is varies. It can go to become the amino acids. And amino acids subsequently can produce protein. And this is a reversible process protein. And if it's too much, it can store in the muscle. Or if it's too much, then it can secrete it as a form of urea and at the same time pyruvate also can form the lactic acid lactic acid with the help of um, LDH which is lactodehydrogenase enzyme and also it can go into a ketone bodies in case of the starvation because ketone bodies and, and glucose is the only form of the energy that can be consumed by the brain um, okay so this is glycolysis which needs further 10 steps uh, descriptions later secondly the glucose also can store as a form of glycogen in the liver and it also can transfer back to glucose so this is where we call glycogen synthesis or glycogenolysis glycogenolysis if it goes this way if um, the acetyl-CoA converted into fatty acid, then it's a fatty acid synthesis. If it goes back into the acetyl-CoA, then we call it beta-oxidation, fatty acid beta-oxidation. And the Krebs cycle or the TCA cycle. And actually, in the Krebs cycle, um, there, is a, there is a pathway that can shunt up from the micro mitochondria in the form of citrate and citrate will form into the malate and malate will get to become the pyruvate and this is what we call a glycogenolysis this is a pentose shunt and all, all this a uh, form of amino acid and lactic acid if it's converted back into the pyruvate also it, it is called glucogenolysis sorry gluconeogenesis gluconeogenesis 
So basically, it's a form of glucose formations of glucose from a non-carbohydrate um, origin.